Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. How are you doing today? Ready for some new drama from Ask a Lawyer? Let's go to the first one, about OP's parents, who promised OP will inherit their company, but sold it to OP's brother behind OP's back. Listen to the story to find out all the details, and of course to hear my insights. Buckle up, as it's a long one. Enjoy the stories, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course, don't forget to leave a comment. This gets ugly, but I'll try to be brief. In a nutshell, my parents, over 80, have owned and operated a successful business for 30 years. It was always the plan that the company would be left to my brother, 56, and I, male 52, when they pass. Estate planning was done, lawyers and accountants were involved, and a family trust was set up so the transfer would be easy when the time comes. So it came as a shock this April when, on a visit with my parents, my dad casually informs me that he sold the business to my brother. This was done entirely in secret between my mom, dad, and brother. The process took over a year to complete, and must have been in the works for longer, probably a year in the planning, so two plus years. I was in shock, obviously, but didn't make a stink about it for two reasons. One, my son was with me, and I didn't want to lose my cool in front of him. Two, the deal was done at this point, so nothing I could say or do would change that. I got a couple details about the deal, like the amount and the term of the finance, and that my parents were funding the deal. No banks involved. But that's all I knew. So I went no contact for about two months. My parents would call, text, like everything was 100% normal, but I would not answer or respond. I didn't know what to say or how I felt. Anyway, my mom reached out about two months later with a text asking me to please read. She wanted to let me know that I was still in the picture and that my brother and I will share the estate equally and that she wanted to explain. I told her no explanation was necessary, that dad had insulted me in a text a month before we met in person about a business bridge loan for my business, not uncommon and always paid back, but that being insulted, blindsided, and marginalized has let me know where I fit in the family dynamic and that if they thought it was any of my business, they would have kept me in the loop. And lastly, that I didn't want to discuss it further as it would make things worse. She responded by sending a text saying that dad would have to reach out to me to explain why he didn't want to discuss the sale with me before and try to mend the fences and that she would send me copies of the deal. I was still very hurt and told her that as demonstrated, this is none of my business, that I would take a page from their playbook and not inform them of any major news or aspects of my life and that there was no need to mend fences as none were damaged. That was my mistake, thinking we had a different relationship. She responded with saying she wasn't happy with the way this was done, but happy at least that I was still talking to her. I told her I was upset at the insult and at being kept in the dark about the whole thing, for however long it was in the works, that my brother can have it all, and that I'll accept the fact that they cut me out of the family, so cutting me out of the inheritance is the next logical step, that I don't see any way to make this right, and not sure I want to. Again, I said this is all still very fresh, and I'd prefer not to pick at the wound. Anyway, there was a bit of back and forth between my mom and I, with my mom informing my dad what was going on. After about a week, I sent a reply that said basically that they had hurt me immeasurably, that I hold all three of them equally complicit, and for my safety and well-being and fear of further explanations and humiliation, they won't hear from me again. This was mid-June. I did not hear from any of them until August 9th. I'd blocked all of them on my phone and social media, but my brother sent a message through an old conversation in Facebook. FYI, you have to delete all the conversations that include the people you block or they can still reach you. That my dad had a stroke and is in the hospital and that he's not expected to make it. I had just begun counseling on the 8th to try and help me come to terms with what went down, so the timing was super extra special. My initial reaction was not to go, but my wife encouraged me to. And with the help of an emergency session with the counselor on the phone on the drive to their town, I deferred and went. It was horrible. I could not speak to my brother, much less look at him. I did the best I could to support my mom. The pain, loss, sadness, rage, and loneliness was pure perfection in my deconstruction. After a few days, he passed having never regained consciousness. I returned to my mom's house and spent the night. We talked about things. She gave me some sort of insight into my dad's thinking. It didn't help. In fact, it made it worse, but at her insistence that she would make it right, I accepted her olive branch. I even extended one to my brother, and we talked the next day. It was terrible, awkward, and soul-crushing. I left to go home half a day's drive away. 
I told them that I had to leave as I could not support them through their grief and they cannot help me with mine. I was completely unraveled. The drive home was arduous and life-threatening. I got about halfway and had to stop as I was certain that with the mood I was in and the thoughts I was having would ensure, if not a fiery end, one that included plenty of twisted steel and broken glass. My wife and friend came and got me. I was a complete and total wreck for the next few days. I was certain I would undo myself and let my wife, friend, mom, brother, counselor, and doctor know where my head was at and took steps to limit those opportunities. The meds helped some, as well as the counseling. My wife and friend took away all the easy tools of dispatchment, and I made sure I didn't work late or alone. Despite these efforts, after about a week, I was confident I would self-edit. I texted my brother to keep my mom close as she would need him. He never responded. In fact, I've not heard from him since I left my mom's house. I spoke to my mom a few weeks later. Obviously, I was wrong in my assessment of my conviction, but told my mom about the text. She said he never mentioned anything to her about it. Anyway, Dad's celebration is next week. I'm not attending. Neither is my wife and kids. Their choice. I've told the kids nothing, but they have seen how badly things affected me, and despite my dad having been a good father for 50 years and grandfather for 22, don't want to go and be a part of the awkwardness or try to explain my absence to friends and family. So am I the a-hole in not going to the memorial? And or in how I reacted to the sale of the family business? Edit. The same questions or comments keep reoccurring, so I'll put their responses here. There was a written and express succession plan that involved multiple meetings and costs for years. Everything up until this transaction was discussed and open with all parties involved. Despite what many feel, I don't care about the money, never have. In fact, I told them he can have it all right from the get-go, but they're presenting it like it's still 50-50, and it's not. I'd like to know why the secrecy, why the sudden change, why buy something that was half yours just by waiting? Why insult me a month before dropping the bomb? Why, when you knew how I feel, leave me to twist for four months? How can any of them keep a secret of this magnitude for two plus years? Who advised you on this revision? Many answers will become apparent below. For those that claim I wasn't cut out because it was sold and that the money from the sale will be in the estate, which is half yours. My parents funded the sale, so they do not have the proceeds of the sale. They hold the note and get a monthly mortgage payment, a payment made with the profits of the company. So if they left it as it was the profits of the company would go into the family trust, building up year over year. When they pass, the company is split between my brother and I, and the profits built up over the years would cover the estate taxes and still have a hefty nest egg. But this purchase sale has the company paying the mortgage and triggered a massive capital gains tax on my parents that they wouldn't have to pay. That has wiped out all their cash and the funds in the family trust. Upon my mother's passing, my brother can simply stop paying the mortgage, and because he's an executor of the estate, he's not about to sue himself for non-payment. Meaning that should I wish to sue him for non-payment, I would do so with my personal funds, where he gets to defend the lawsuit with the estate funds. Put simply, I'd be paying 50% of his legal fees when I sue him, while punching holes into the estate's financial bucket. So let's say mom passes tomorrow, and my brother stops making payments. The estate would have maybe two mortgage payments in it out of 240. There's no money in the family trust as it was exhausted making a down payment on the capital gains tax, which isn't finished being paid. So the estate sells their house and other assets, covers the remaining capital gains taxes, and maybe there's 200,000 left in the estate. Let's assume that the company was worth somewhere in the seven to eight figures. The split at this point would be 200,000 cash and the seven figure mortgage but he's not paying the mortgage anymore. So I'd sue him with my personal money and he would defend with the $200,000 cash in the estate. Meanwhile, the government looks at the note and goes, hey OP, you have to pay your estate taxes on half of the note and $200,000. All the while, he's sitting on the asset and collecting 100% of the profits, having made two or three mortgage payments and knows that I'm paying 50% of his legal fees if or when I sue him. With it looking like I've got to clear the estate taxes on half of seven figures, what are the odds I'd have the funds to cover the legal expenses? And it's not like the lawsuit wouldn't take a decade to get cleared up. So yeah, he has it all. In my opinion, OP has every right to be upset. They basically gave OP's brother the business and hid it from OP. No contact is difficult, but I think OP should go completely no contact with both of them now. 
Opie's brother sounds like he's chosen his side and isn't interested in a relationship with Opie anymore. Opie's mom is just trying to assuage her own guilt for being useless and not stepping up to Opie's dad when it mattered most. And now let's see if the community agrees with me. Kester Faye says, you're the a-hole. People's financial decisions, including your parents, are none of your business. You haven't been cut out. Your brother is buying the asset. You should be making sure that you get half of the actual assets, including half of the full amount that your brother is paying for the business. Instead, you're flouncing and treating the people whose money you want badly. Zip Zap Zop 2 says, When family does this type of betrayal, it is devastating. You eloquently describe the gut-wrenching pain which I'm sure didn't even scratch the surface of the depth of your wounds. You have incredible support, and you have hopefully come through the worst of the insanity. As someone who has been betrayed by siblings, I can feel your pain. But slowly, you will come through this. The intense, blinding pain will lessen and get better in time. Your brother is a selfish a-hole, and your mom just went along with your dad. She probably could not stick up to him or your brother. She was outvoted and pushed around. It's crazy how your brother views possessions and money over loyalty and common family unity. Duck him. Karma will get that little rat. Please, take care of yourself. And maybe that business would not have been the best thing for you. In 10 years, you may look back at this and think how glad you are to not be in business with that slime ball. Odd Welcome says, I don't want to be mean, but when you decide to go complete no contact, go and stay complete no contact. Death sucks, but this wishy-washy stuff and letting the emotions and resentment build isn't good for anyone. You just should have said, okay, thanks, and blocked that conversation and never looked back. I, 27 male, have been married to my wife, 26 female, for a little over a year. Last week was my wife's birthday, and she received a $3,000 diamond necklace from my brother, 30 male. I was pretty weirded out by this, as even though my brother is far from poor, He's not the type to gift anyone thousands of dollars of gift, and he especially never gave my wife something as expensive as this. My wife shrugged it off as it was nothing, and my brother was just feeling generous. Here's where I might be the a-hole. I still feel uneasy about the gift, and so I ended up bringing it up to my brother's wife, 30 female, and she lost it on him. Apparently, she never agreed to my brother gifting another woman such an expensive gift. Now, both my brother and my wife are mad at me. My brother for creating problems in his marriage, and my wife who thinks I only blabbed about my brother's gift for her to my sister-in-law just cause I'm insecure that my own birthday gift for her wasn't as expensive. I paid for a full spa day for her, which she really liked, but it indeed wasn't as expensive as my brother's necklace. And who also thinks that sister-in-law is overreacting, as she herself received a lot of expensive jewelry from my brother. Am I the a-hole? Our spect says, there are several red flags in your text. First of, a gift that expensive to another man's wife, without talking about it first, is the first red flag. It would be the other way around too. If my imaginary wife would gift my imaginary brother some expensive item without talking to his wife first, red flag, period. Second, your own wife shrugged it off as if it was nothing. This red flag is even bigger than the one before. If she doesn't even care to act surprised, then stuff is real. Third flag. You talked to your sister-in-law, and she didn't know about it, and this red flag is the king of flags for me. Your brother didn't even tell his own wife, let alone ask her if she'd be okay with it, before getting your wife that necklace. And last, but not least, to hit the BS red flag bingo. Now, both your wife and your brother blame you for this, and what would actually be red flag number five, but we hit the bingo so we let it slide is your own wife trying to gaslight you with telling you that you feel insecure because your own gift wasn't that expensive. If I were in your shoes, I'd talk to my sister-in-law and start Operation Necklace right about now. Something here stinks, and my best guess, either your brother wants your wife or he's already got her. Either way, be on your toes. I wish you the best of luck. By the way, you talking to your sister-in-law is the only normal thing that happened here. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Certain Certainty says, not the a-hole. Let's break it down. Your brother and your wife are dancing horizontally. They think you're too dumb to notice, and as a private joke between them, he gave her an expensive necklace in front of you. They thought they would be able to get away with being blatant about their relationship. You stuffed things up by contacting the sister-in-law, who has a few dozen more IQ points than your good self, and recognizes horizontal dancing when she sees it. That's what this is about. Neon Cactus Field says, Not the a-hole. 
You don't upstage a husband by giving his wife a 3K necklace. That's odd behavior, and I would be rather suspicious about it, especially since brother-in-law lied to his own wife about the gift. Edited to add, a lot of people are sure that cheating is going on, and that's not an unreasonable guess. But OP, does your brother have a history of just upstaging you in general? Maybe he has a crush on your wife and he wanted to show off, and he doesn't care that it was a jerk move. Either way, your brother should never have done this, especially not without speaking to you about it first.